So this is a WebSocket controlled pan tilt jig that I created to help liven up video calls a bit. It also runs off an 18 volt drill battery similar to what you see in household tools and the like. Of course like anything in life you can buy one of these things although the price for a commercial option is uh, intimidating uh, and frankly the commercial ones don't quite have the same blocky booger aesthetic that this 3D print does. What do you think poo poo? You like it? I like it. It also doubled as a cat entertainment device, but only for about five minutes until they lost interest. The concept for this is pretty simple, but if you want to make something similar, I think there's a few tips you might find useful in this video. It does look good. But before I deal with that, there's something that needs to be addressed. Yeah, this is not my finest work, so I'm going to have to clean it up a bit. I went with this concept to have multiple stacked boards. There's a few reasons for this. For one, it's easier for me to do the soldering and arrangement of the parts, but also it's good to thermally and electronically separate the stepper drivers from the microcontroller. Stepper drivers are quite electronically and thermally noisy, so it's good that we give them some space. You can see these heat sinks. They're quite chunky, so we need to separate them out and get some airflow going. So during what I'm calling the abomination phase of this project, I already had in mind that I was going to have to take it apart, so most of the components are removable. The electronics are pretty simple, it's mostly just this modular setup. So we've got 18 volts coming in from the battery, and that gets stepped down to 3.3 volts, um, that's what the microcontroller requires. Unfortunately the stepper drivers require 5 volts and 5 volt logic. So I use some logic shifters here, and the 5 volt can come from the ESP32 itself, because it has a 5 volt pin. There won't really be any power draw off the 5 volt pin, so we don't need to worry about that, it's just for the logic. Then we take the 5 volt and the output from the adapters, and that goes to the stepper drivers, uh, which use the battery to drive the motors. During the abomination phase that I mentioned before, I managed to kill an OLED and a microcontroller. I can't say for sure that it wasn't due to just a short somewhere on that awful board, but it could have been due to a voltage spike, so just to prevent anything like that from happening again I added a xenodiode and a couple of caps to the 3.3 volt rail. Okay, mechanically to attach the OLED I just designed this kind of reusable interface in CAD uh, and then I know that this, uh, since I've tested this interface, I know that it will fit. So I can just subtract the clearances from the model and add the mount parts, uh, just a couple of boolean operations, and then you've got like, a nice kind of guaranteed fit. Same deal when it comes to strain relief for the cable. <laughs> this is another thing I like to do for strain relief. I don't really know how recommended this would be, but in theory the polyester thread is, is basically PET, which is the same thing the enclosure is made out of, so I don't see any reason why this would be a problem. I didn't make it all that strong, but it's just to prevent flexing uh, when adjusting the boards. Uh, but for the software we need to some way for the keyboard inputs to make it from one computer travel over the internet and reach the ESP32. Uh, we also have some constraints on latency because we don't want a keyboard input to go and uh, take multiple seconds to arrive uh, at the controller. 
Uh, the ESP32 is useful here because it supports Wi-Fi, which is another motivation for trying to keep the controller far away from the stepper drivers. I have a feeling that Wi-Fi would not respond very well to the noise from those. To help solve the latency problem, we can use something called WebSockets, uh, which is a protocol that the ESP32 supports with their library. Uh, and then we just need a server somewhere that can also form a connection with a remote client. So it all, it's all web circuits under the hood, but then the uh, human being can interact with the simple index.html, which then opens up the web socket connection uh, through JavaScript. The server itself is just written in Node.js. It's like less than 100 lines. It's very simple. So with the microcontrollers, where things get a bit harder, actually, because we run into a common issue when you deal with networking or I.O. in programming, and that is uh, uh, multi-threading or asynchronous um, commands. There are ways you could work around this. You could have something separate that generates the step commands and you just notify it when d direction or whatever is changing. But uh, in this case, we actually uh, are better off just using the two cores that the ESP32 has. So that came in very handy. We can have one task that just uh, continuously checks for the messages from the server in a loop and another task that is just continuously running the step um, changes as required. Here's the finished enclosure. Ah, oh, kind of reminds me of someone. Who wants to play video games? A helical gear set gives us the tilting motion and it has a nice mechanical advantage and a bonus of keeping the mass of the stepper directly above the center of rotation so we don't have to worry so much about inertia when the camera swivels. The base is a bit more primitive. I use a bevel and an idler gear and again I'm trying to keep the stepper down as low as possible uh, for stability. You can see the channel the slip ring takes here. You're probably wondering if this gets hot with the stepper motor enclosed and uh, yeah it does. Um, it can get pretty toasty, if you, especially if you have a continuous load. Uh, it's to the point where I wouldn't use PLA for this. Some vent holes would have probably been a good idea. Hope you enjoyed that. I'm happy to answer any other questions about the process. I know I kind of glossed over a few things in this video. But uh, yeah, hope that was an entertaining watch and see you next time.